All right, here we go. We got another Sunday Night Live session, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I am the editor-in-chief of the Watercraft Journal. My name is Kevin Shaw. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're jumping in hot. We got a lot of people who are interested in this topic. Um, quite frankly, we got a lot of... Oh, got to bring the microphone in. Whoops. Um, got a lot of, I should say, impassioned people about this, uh, about this topic. And what I have to tell you is not good news. I'm just going to put it all out there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, this episode is sugar-free. Uh, <laughs> there's there's going to be some bad news shared. And then my opinions and my views that I share, my advice that I give, probably is going to be less positive. So uh, buckle up, because this is what today is going to be. It's just a whole lot of beatings. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, as you have seen by the title of this episode, there's some bad news coming out of Yamaha. Now, unfortunately, first let me turn the light on. There we go. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, we were coming into 2021 actually with a lot of momentum. And sales numbers coming out of 2020 were killer. The demand was so high that representatives of all three manufacturers were quite frankly alluding to the fact that we that we that they felt it was a bubble that was going to pop. Uh, they they really felt strongly that uh, the demand wasn't going to keep up and that it was just going to kind of peak and then and then and then plummet. And weirdly enough, demand has actually increased um, more and more, even though COVID restrictions have died down in predominantly um, watercraft purchasing states, uh, the demand is still crazy high. And manufacturers are not, and I'm going to put this out there, they are not in a position where they're overwhelmed. It's not like, oh my gosh, there's so many orders we can't handle it. There's other factors at play here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through the details of what has happened here, starting with the Yamaha, slightly affecting Sea-Doo, and Kawasaki's pretty much pinned, but they're not overwhelmed. Um, but I think it's important to start off right out of the gate. Um, with the letter that's right here on my screen. And for those of you who have who have not read it, I'm literally going to read it to you right now, okay? Because uh, if you haven't heard this, if you have not read this, you should hear it. This is coming, all right, from Dean Burnett. He is the Chief Sales and Marketing Officer of Yamaha Motor Corporation, or the Yamaha Boat Business, uh, Vice President of the U.S. US Marine Business Unit. So it, of the of the... Yamaha Motor Corporation, the branch that is over boats and watercraft, he is the chief sales marketing officer. So he's over all sales in the uh, marine side of the Yamaha. So let's just go right back to the letter. All right. This letter was issued to dealers, not to the public, but to dealers. This is an internal memo. So I'm probably going to get in trouble for reading this, but... It bears noting, because I think a lot of people need explanation. They kind of demand explanation. So I'm kind of here doing that. So this, this was sent at the end of the first week of May. So three weeks ago. All right. Um, it says, Dear Yamaha Watercraft Dealer, it goes without saying that 2020 was a difficult year. We began 2021 with a renewed hope that the coronavirus pandemic would be behind us soon that supply chains across the globe would be restored, and we had and we had historic retail demand for all marine products. As we enter the second quarter of 2021, we are seeing the long-term effects of the supply chain becoming clearer, and these effects are making it difficult to fulfill our original product forecast for your dealerships. Over the last over the last year, these continuous supply disruptions and the availability of critical raw materials has created numerous production challenges for both wave runners and boats. 
This was only compounded by the Texas ice storms, which caused many of our chemical suppliers to shut down the facility. Uh, shut down for facility repairs. We'll talk about all these things. Um, everyone at Yamaha is, in every facet of, of the business is working hard to minimize the impact and ensure all available products are delivered to you. At the same time, we are committed to providing you with the most accurate information on what to expect in the in what remains a very unpredictable and dynamic situation. Um, the following are our current projection, projections barring any additional unforeseen circumstances on total deliveries for model year 2021 based on factory guidance. Boats approximately 10% of model year 21, meaning 2021 models, production orders will be unfulfilled. That means that they, um, if they were only build 1,000 units, they're only building 900, but we don't know the actual numbers. It's just an approximation. Wave runners, approximately 15% of the production orders will be unfulfilled. We know you have customers anxious to receive these products and that it puts you in a difficult position of having to explain why their products have not arrived, especially with summer right around the corner. And for that, we truly apologize. As we transition in the coming months to model year 2022, we will continue to develop plans to increase production output at all the facilities to make every effort to meet your current and future demands. We're definitely going to talk about this. Please accept our apologies and know that we are doing everything we can to effectively navigate this challenging environment so we can get boats and wave runners to your dealership as soon as possible. Thank you again for your patience and for your ongoing support for the Yamaha brand. Sincerely, Dean Burnett. Okay, so what are we to get out of this? All right, we're going to do a little bit of David Byrne from the Talking Heads. How did we get here? So um, here's how annual orders work. For you guys who are not familiar, we're going to, I'm going to tell you how this stuff works. Um, at the end of the fourth quarter, which typically comes around, uh, around the middle to end of October, the dealerships, there's a big dealer meeting, and representatives from the dealerships go to this giant dealer meeting and um, there they meet with their regional representative and they report on, Hey, we had a great year. We sold 150 wave runners and we sold a hundred boats. And that was way over the previous year. And boy, we are we're really excited and we want to buy more product for next year. Well, that's exactly what happened in last October. 2020 was a crazy year. And a lot of people just came flooding in because it's like, I can't go to a baseball game. I can't go out to eat. I can't go to the movies. Uh, I can't go on vacation. I can't go to take the kids to Disney World. What can I do? Well, I can hit the water. So they go out and they buy a pair of Wave Runners or CDs or whatever. And so that was kind of the modus operandi for a lot of people in 2020. That influx, a giant influx of people, um, which did overwhelm. I mean, it really did overwhelm the market. Uh, quite frankly, Yamaha, Sea-Doo, and Cowie did not produce enough new units to satisfy market demand for 2020 to the point that major dealers were going to Facebook Marketplace, sending their porters out with trailers and buying up pretty decent used units, taking them back, doing a service check on them, cleaning them up, and selling them as pre-owned personal watercraft. And that was happening coast to coast. Uh, it was actually pretty predominant because manufacturer or the manufacturers simply did not anticipate this big of a demand. And not a lot of people could have anticipated COVID anyhow. So for 2021, everybody, Sea-Doo, Yamaha, Cowie, up their production numbers. Every single one of them. I know that I personally know that Kawasaki up their production number by double digits, low double digits, like 11 or 12% but they did up their production number by double digits. I do not know. I, I believe I heard estimates that Yamaha was going to be up by, by like eight or 9%. That was the plan because dealers were saying, Hey, listen, I sold a hundred units last year. I have X amount of demand. I'm going to buy 120 units this year. Okay, great. We'll sign Kevin up for another 20 units over last year's 100. 
Okay, great. And that's how the regional reps were reporting to corporate. So what happens from corporate? Corporate writes a projection. Corporate says, okay, our total production run is going to be upped by this safe amount. They don't overshoot, but they do a safe amount because they don't want products sitting on dealer floors. No one likes to pay flooring cost. So these dealers get a pretty a pretty safe estimate of the units they're going to be offered. So again, in my example, I said, I want 120 units. Yamaha comes back to me and says, just to be safe, we're going to, we're going to sell you 112 units or 110 units. Okay, fine. That's okay. You know, I asked for 120. I'll take 110 or 112. Sounds fair. So that's how they went forward going into 2021. The problem is, is that coming into 2021, the projections of how the economy was going to be, the state of economics were going to be, uh, quite frankly, the social state and the retraction of COVID restrictions, um, unfortunately, did not let up. They did not meet projections. All projections were pretty much wrong for how the beginning of 2021 was going to go because the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 has been a nightmare for most people. Um, unfortunately, what we're seeing is a lot of aftermath of a really bad transition of power. Um, I'm going to give you some examples. This is not hyperbole. Um, this is actual fact. You guys can look this up and I don't care what news outlets you use depending on your politics, these are facts. Currently, the port of Long Beach, which is the major port feeding the Los Angeles Basin, and the port of San Francisco, there is an estimate of over 130. This is the number I've, I've read, and I had confirmed by a, an associate of mine that I know who it works for the Port Authority in Long Beach. There is a 130 container ships moored off of these uh, uh, um, off of these ports okay uh, I can't speak for San Francisco but I have family and friends who still live in Southern California and the coastline of Long Beach looks like a parking lot these ships have been moored there for months and the reason being is <sighs> Without getting too far in the weeds, right now uh, there there are outstanding uh, tariff disputes, and a lot of manufacturers in the Philippines, Southeast Asia, uh, they were in the middle of trade disputes with the previous administration, and the previous administration regularly used the threat of high tariffs as a point of leverage. And they said, listen, if you're not going to lower your prices, we're going to up your tariffs. And so that was kind of the way the previous administration was negotiating. Well, during the middle of these Southeast Asia and Indochina negotiations, high tariffs were put in and the administration left. And the current administration has not resolved these high tariffs. So currently what that means is that a container ship from Vietnam, I'm just pulling that out of the ether, this mysterious container ship full of parts from Vietnam, literally it, while, it's got an, while it's anchored outside of the port of Long Beach is losing money, it would lose more money if it actually delivered its payload, if it actually delivered its cargo. So right now it's a waiting game, and a lot of these uh, a lot of these containers are being held up, and the unload schedule is being constantly rearranged, just so that uh, in hopes that the current U.S. administration will go back in and pull these tariffs back down and allow trade as it was four years ago. If that makes sense, I I I know I kind of went in the weeds on that one. So that's number one. That's why a massive amount of America's plastics, a lot of our rubber, 
and a lot of our raw aluminum has not made port. It's because they're sitting off in container ships right now. Predominantly, those, those raw materials come into San Francisco. And we're waiting for negotiations to continue. And thus far, and I did check about an hour ago, every news outlet. I went to CNN. I went to Fox. I went to Newsmax. I went to MSNBC. I went to the AP. There is no... Currently, there's nothing on the current administration's docket to renegotiate any of the Indochina, what is referred to as the Indochina trade agreements. So that is a number one holdup for our raw materials. And that has been one of the key things that is mentioned in the letter. They literally don't have raw materials. The rumor right now, and what's getting to a lot of dealers, is that... Uh, the VXs and the GPs are the units predominantly hit. And the reason for those is that the raw plastics necessary to mold a lot of the key components simply aren't there. And I, having personally been to the manufacturing plant, I can tell you there are giant hoppers full of just silicate plastic beads. I mean, Tons, metric tons of these things. And you can stick your arm all the way in there and shovel them up. And they're colored plastics and they pour them out and they literally press out uh, fairings and, you know, deck components and guard rails and all of these, or, or bumper rails, bond rail bumpers, all these plastic components. And Yamaha simply does not have those plastics. So that's number one. Number two is uh, um, the current administration is paying people not to work. And that is not coming out of this guy's mouth. That I am regurgitating what has been relayed to me from certain persons inside of Yamaha. There are people choosing not to work. And so manufacturing is struggling. The manufacturing side is struggling to find qualified people willing to work. That is a fact. That is, that is a fact. That is, that's not me griping. I'm just relaying what I have been told. And that is embarrassing that we're in this situation. Uh, I made a joke last week that meatpacking plants, and this, this came out in the Associated Press, uh, meatpacking plants have reported uh, massive amounts of people just not showing up for work. And because of, because of that, there's actually projections for um, certain meatpacking plants uh, that there's going to be shortages in bacon. And I made the joke, I'm like, how dare you take my bacon from me? But we're now getting into the point where when we see manufacturing grind to a halt, you're going to find less goods on the shelf. So unfortunately, we're seeing this log jam from policies that have been put, put in place over the last 110 days. And that's sickening. Um, the third component that has been surprisingly affecting Sidu more than Yamaha. Well, I shouldn't say more than Yamaha, but it has been affecting Sidu is the fact that there is a trucker shortage. And right now, uh, the trucker shortage has resulted in um, distribution fields or distribution warehouses sitting full of finished units that cannot be delivered yet. Um and I laugh because recently there's a lot of people. Um, um, there's a lot of people who uh, um, have been putting up pictures uh, of rigs actually being uh, finally loaded up and driven out of Texas, out of El Paso, Texas. So some units are starting to show up. And. Um, Uh, anyhow, um, 
that's been kind of the situation right now is we're looking at a manufacturing shortage and the manufacturer simply cannot produce something when there's no materials. You cannot bake a cake without the necessary ingredients. And that's where they currently are. And uh, they do make mention of the ice storms in Texas. And those chemical refinery plants, which do produce plastics and do pro do pro uh, do produce uh, ad he uh, a lot of adhesives that are used, um, it, the, the big talk is the affected units are being held up because of plastics and adhesives. And whether that's true or not, I can't verify. But um, what is going on right now is these facilities in Texas are currently scrambling to get up to speed. They've, they're, they've been at a trickle thus far because uh, they were directly affected by that kind of stuff. Um, that was a big deal. Um, so that is kind of where we're sitting. Um, there is, there is another part that, and I can't verify this one. This is, you could take this with a grain of salt. I, I don't know because I don't know anything about it, but this was conveyed to me by my friend who's a port or the guy I know who's in the Port Authority of Long Beach, um, that the, uh, the union workers are being told they can only work for six hours a day. And of those six hours, um, these guys can only work physically work for four of them. And so they're like, dude, we want to work. We want to put the time in. We want to get the job done. And because of negotiations with the state of California, uh, these union workers are, are simply being told they cannot work more than six hours a day. This is what I was told. I don't know if this is current. I don't know if it even was true. Um, but it is unfortunate that um, if that's the case, it's another reason for a holdup. So that was the beginning of the year. And I know I got people who are all bent out of shape and they're yelling and they want to argue politics with me. And I'm not, I'm not inventing this. All right. I have articles pulled up. I can provide receipts. I don't know what to tell you. So, um, I know this is a touchy subject and everything is politics now, but it is what it is. And I have receipts. I can bring up articles from every news site. So I do my homework. So let's go back to it. Um, about three and a half weeks ago, we got, uh, we got a video from, um, uh, he, he the he's the CEO of Yamaha Europe, Eric Desanyas or Desanyas, um, and he was trying to explain what was happening to uh, Yamaha Europe. And one of the key things that what wh why that video was timely, he was trying basically he was expressing Yamaha's commitment to his dealers and his commitment to delivering product to its, um, to its, to, uh, its customers. Uh, but one of the big things that they uh, pointed to was the holdup in the Suez Canal. And that holdup not only affected Europe, but it affected North America as well. And uh, I know that uh, because of our other magazine, I can tell you that um, uh, there's a, large portion of all of our manufacturing is coming up through the Suez Canal and that really locked up stuff too. So that caused Yamaha to halt production. The, uh, to my understanding, there's been four halts of manufacturing um, and none of them have been at 100%. Uh, they, they have not been at 100% for a while and that's that's exhausting that uh, my heart goes out to the guys that work at Yamaha. I'm sure they, they all have ulcers by now, but um, what we're looking at is a raw material problem 
and a staffing problem, a worker problem, and uh, a transportation shipping problem. And it's a perfect storm. And we're also looking at insane demand, absolutely insane demand. Um, so what happens here? Uh, right now, uh, according to Business Insider, there is currently, uh, as of the beginning of this year, uh, effectively zero petroleum-based plastic production in the United States. Um, that is according to Business Insider. Um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, there's just a lot, there's a lot of things that you, I'm surprised that we're not doing domestically. I mean, we're not making our own penicillin for goodness sakes. So it's really, really difficult. Um, it's really difficult. And so right now we're looking at two major problems for Yamaha customers. And I'm, I wanted to focus on these two things because I, I really didn't want to harp on the, on how did we get here? I want to, I want to provide solutions. I want to be able to provide you some, some insight and, and some direction forward because sitting here and grinding our teeth and wringing our hands and getting pissed off isn't, doing any of us any good. So right now, uh, I want to talk to you guys who have currently received your new 2021 unit. If you've received an EX or an FX, doesn't apply to you. Uh, Superjet doesn't apply to you. Now, what's funny is that there was, there was Superjet holdups way back. As soon as, as soon as the 21s were released, People were putting deposit. Well, people were putting deposits down and everything, but the stand-up guys were. Um, oh boy, here we go. It's gone into politics. I knew it. Oh shit. Sorry. Um, but the Superjet was the first to encounter a lot of holdups, and interestingly enough, nothing, nothing about the Superjet is built in the U.S. It's entirely out of Japan. And the trickle was not even that. It was it was excruciatingly slow. Um, we have some super chats here, and I have been ignoring you guys, and you deserve to be answered. So let me take a second and answer your super chats. I know I passed one guy. Jason. Oh, Jason came in. Pre-ordered a GP in August. Not here yet. Can get a 2020 EXR with 14 hours, basically MSRP. Wondering if I should get it. With, get it, my GP may or may not come. Jason, I'm going to answer this question a little bit later because it actually goes into my topic on people who've put deposits down. So give me a minute to get to yours. Uh, normally, I give Super Chats. Uh, I give Super Chats uh, priority one, but uh, I, I it, your question goes into a whole other section that I prepared. All right, the second question here. Random question, what steps can you take to clean and prevent stains on a vinyl seat? First ride out, looks like my trunk color bled into it. Um, that, unfortunately, depending on the color, that's a problem. Um, depending on what color seat you have, I presume you have a white seat, um, which I can't believe they're using white seats. It's, uh, I mean, it looks good. It looks great, but can't keep them clean. Um, we did a couple... We did some we did some articles on vinyl restoration and vinyl treatment. Uh, PC, let me let me pull up. I'll pull up a link when I get over the main topic. I'll pull up a link and I'll share it here because we did an article on the Watercraft Journal about that. So I, I'll get back to you on that one. All right, Stony writes. Took my twenty one GP out this weekend. Noticed that everything in the front compartment was soaked after a couple hours of riding. Have you heard of anyone else, anyone else having issues with the new? front hood seal um yeah double check your double check your weather stripping because it's it slips in um yeah uh, or it slips out excuse me it slips out it's not glued in it just slips on and uh yeah pc i'll get to you I'll, I'll get you i'll get you an article link um but back to stoney's question 
Uh, double check that all your weather stripping is there because it's not glued into place. If, my, if, if I'm not mistaken, it is pressed in, all right? And it could have been, uh, it could have been exactly what, um, what I'm talking about. It could have come undone, could have backed off the seal. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can adjust your latch. Um, you can tighten, you, you can tighten the latch. You back off the screws on the receiver and you back and you, I think you back it up a little bit. So it's, it's a little bit harder to snap, but it's tighter. It's got a tighter tension on it. Um, if that doesn't solve it, then uh, you're going to want to talk to your service department. All right. So, all right. Okay. So let's get, let's get back to uh, our little two prong topic here. Number one, for you guys who have received a, they're going to sit on it for weeks, if not months, because they don't have the parts. So here's what I tell you. Um, my suggestion to you is call your service department. Don't call the parts department. Don't call your sales floor. Call your service department. Say, I have a 2021, whatever you got, GP, VX, whatever. I have my recall notice. I need you to order the parts and schedule a time. Because I do not want you to have this ski longer than two day, two or three days, maximum. And if they give you any grief, you tell them I'm taking my business elsewhere. Because guess what? Their time is reimbursed by Yamaha. And their time that's reimbursed from Yamaha is at a better rate than what they get from you. So, unfortunately... <laughs> Call your sales guy, play hardball, and say, "Order this." My name is Kevin Shaw. I own a 2021 GP 1800R SVHO. I need you to order the parts for me, and I need you to call me when the parts come in, and I'll bring my ski in. And they say, "Well, I can't tell you when the parts come in." You say, "Well, that's fine. If you can't tell me when you think the parts will come in, just call me when they come in. Call me when they come in." And we'll schedule a time for me to drop my ski off. That's all you got to say. But you make sure they order it. All right? That's the point. You need to reach out and you need to tell them, I'm not giving you my ski until you get the parts ready. Until you have the parts in hand. Because right now, there's such an influx. There's such a demand for this replacement switch that they can't tell you when it's going to come in off the truck. They simply do not know. They don't know. All right? That sucks. I know. Everyone wants someone to have all the answers. They want me to have all the answers. They want Jerry Gaddis to have the answers. They want Dave Bambus to have the answers. They want their dealer to have all the answers. It, it's, a, it's a fog of war. All right? It's, a, it's, a, it's bad news. So, um, anyhow... The other section, the other thing I got is the bad news. I mean, everything right now has been bad news. <laughs> Nothing has been sunshine and rainbows. But now we're going to get into the really bad stuff. If you have a deposit, and I know guys who the minute my article went live, the minute my video went live, and I said, here's the new 21 GPs, here's the new VX Limited, Here's the new blank, blank, blank that they called their dealer and said, here's $5,000 or $2,000 or 500 bucks. Sign me, sign me up for a new, for a new G a blue and, you know, blue and white GP 1800. And they go, okay, Mr. Shaw, no problem. We'll let you know when it comes in. Great. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Right now, no dealer can tell you for sure when those are going to come in. They're giving you ballparks. They're going like, we think the second week of June, we've been told the first week of July, 
I think by August 15th, they don't know. They literally don't know. They have ballparks because literally the head. Um, this is. Oh, my gosh. The fighting is ridiculous here. So the head of sales literally said, unless something else happens, unless a plague of locusts or the Nile turns to blood, we don't know what else is going to happen. Hopefully we can deliver in time. They literally are just kind of doing their damnedest. That's where we are. So anyone who has a deposit, and I've I've answered this email probably eight times. Uh, emails. I'm not talking messages. I'm talking emails. People go, uh, I made a deposit in September, and they told me I won't get my ski till July. What should I do? Get your money back. This is my advice for anyone who has been waiting longer than six months for a personal watercraft. Get your money back. You're not getting your ski this year. That's true. Get your call them up. Get your money back. And here's what I suggest: if you can afford it, have cash in hand. I mean, I'm talking fifteen thousand dollars cash. And I want you to be a poltergeist haunting Facebook Marketplace. I want you haunting major retailers in major retail states, predominantly Florida. And here's what you're going to do. If you have to have a brand new GP 1800R, what you're going to do is you're going to act like I do when it comes to finding an old classic car, project car. And that is cash in hand, the trailer hooked up to the truck, and I'm scouring the internet. And then as soon as I see something go live, I make a phone call. I don't send them a personal PM message. I don't send them a text. I don't send emojis. I get on the phone like a man, and I call them, and I say, my name's Kevin Shaw. I'm interested in your 1969 Coronet 500. I'll be there in four hours. That's what I'm telling you. If you need to have it, you need to be ready to rock. Don't be ready. Don't. Can I finance? Can I? Because someone else with cash in hand is going to be there when you pull up. And if you try to sit there and finance with that dealership and another guy shows up and he goes, I'll pay MSRP in Benjamins. That guy's walking away with the ski. This is where we are today. I'm not exaggerating. Not This is not hyperbole. This is not because I want to hurt dealers. And I don't have a vendetta against financing. But I'm telling you, the, the market right now is such, if you have to have it, if you cannot live without a brand new VX Deluxe or whatever, have the cash ready and jump in the truck. Jump in the truck. Call in sick. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible, boss. Oh, I'll take a bunch of NyQuil and I'll be back in tomorrow. And jump on the interstate and go get that ski. I'm telling you. That's the way you're going to get a ski. All right. Fortune favors the brave. Do not expect do not expect your dealership to come through in the 11th hour and be like, dude, I, I I know you've been waiting, bro. And you're, you know, you're such a good friend of mine that I put this one aside, even though we got people here driving from out of state to get your ski. All right. Your dealer, your dealer will, will undercut you without blinking an eye. If a guy shows up with cash, they will undercut you. And you think, and, and, and just to, put too fine a point on it. I said this before. I'll say it again. Jerry Gaddis bought an RXPX 300. He, he ordered it through BRP. All right. He had paperwork on that ski, including a VIN number. 
His dealership sold it the day it came off the truck to someone else. He's like, what the hell, dude? I go, sorry, it's gone. Well, we, we did all the paperwork. He goes, I have a bill of sale. Well, yeah, but that was through corporate, and uh, and they gave him a runaround, and so he had to wait another two weeks and get a ski, a different uh, – they had to find an identical one, purple speakers, blah, 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 all the stuff. And they undercut they undercut the <laughs> Jerry Gaddis and Greenhulk.net, all right? Who's – He's not a nobody. <laughs> and and he's done business with that dealership for years. He's got a good rapport with them. They're friends. Still sold the ski out from underneath them. All right? Do not think your dealer will not do the same. Right now, they're trying to keep their door not right now they're trying to keep their doors open. Because they're turning people away. They're turning people away. And it's bad news. It's really bad news. Uh, and I don't, I have lots of friends and supporters and companies that are partners with the Watercraft Journal who are dealerships and they're selling everything they get, but that's when they get something. So, my suggestion to you, all of you who have a deposit down, unless you have it in writing, I mean, I'm talking a blood oath. <laughs> All right. I'm talking, you know, like sealed in blood and notarized that your dealer swears by everything holy that your your ski will be in your hands on a specific date. Get your deposit back. Get your deposit back. Go online. Put your war paint on because it's Thunderdome. All right. Two men enter, one man leaves. And that man leaves with a brand new wave runner. So that's where we are right now. Um, this is this is the ugly, ugly, ugly truth. Um, it's not good news. I wish, I wish I could say, hey guys, I know of another two thousand units that are going to hit mar the market on Wednesday. So be at the be at your dealer Wednesday morning at ten a.m. because the truck's coming in. I can't tell you that. I don't know. I don't know the shipping. I don't know the shipping times, and I don't know when any of these are coming. I just don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I had better news, but guys, yeah, guys, I'm telling you, if you have a deposit and you've been waiting, get your money back, get cash in hand, and just be Mister Wheeler Dealer, ready to roll. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, let's see what other notes I got. That's it. That's everything. 45 minutes. How about we answer some questions? Anyone who has a super chat, if you super chat, uh, $10 or more, you're going to get, you'll get a sticker and you'll get priority for questions. I think I'm going to hang on for another half an hour to 45 minutes. But, um, yeah, I don't want to do another two hours. I don't think we need to. And I can see that it's just turned into a massive political argument. <laughs> um, so there it is. Let's see here. All right. We got the entries. Um yeah, the letter the letters all over Facebook. I think I think you're good now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was told my G, uh, burger writes. I was told my GP eighteen hundred RSVHO is still safe, but I doubt it. I don't know. I don't know what your deal. I don't know what your dealer can commit to you. Um, that's between you and your. Uh, Pete asks, so are they going to refund all these deposits for 21 models? Who's they? Yamaha? Yamaha doesn't get the money. Dealers get the money. Dealers hold on to your deposit. And guess what, dude? That money's spent. The same way that your $30,000 in savings that you got in your bank, guess what? That 30 grand isn't sitting in your bank. All right? It's gone. They use it to pay other stuff. 
Same thing with your same thing with your deposit. Your deposit's gone. So you want your deposit back? You better hit up your dealer fast and say you've got X amount of days to give me my money back. Okay, the time for waiting is over. The time for being nice is over. I'm not saying burn it down and rush on the bank and you know 1929 all over again, but I'm telling you, get your deposit back. Unless you can get your dealer to hardcore commit in like writing, get your money back. Get your money back and start looking. All right. Oh, Matt writes, <laughs> Yamaha doesn't take the deposit, the dealer holds it. All right. They don't hold it. All right. Uh, current delay on the U.S. West Coast for ship ship processing is one month plus. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, PC, I can back this up. I work for a company in Santa Fe Springs. Nothing is getting through Long Beach Port. It's backed up for months. Thank you, PC. I appreciate the vote of confidence. All right. Uh, fix the app, says... Uh, I ordered a Jeep 1800 and then wrecked my Jeep so I can't get it because I had to get a new Jeep. So if you want, there is one of those available at uh, Rosenau Power Sports. Uh, I'm looking for a high power PwC with quiet exhaust. I'm looking for the I'm looking at the Yamaha VX Cruiser HO and the GP 1800 HO. How does performance of these two compare? Does the GP have louder exhaust? Thanks. Paul, um, no, they have the same exhaust, they have the same water box, same engine, same everything. The only difference is that the GP is lighter, which means it, you're going to feel it more. It doesn't absorb the bounces and the bangs and the vibrations as much as the VX does. I personally think you'll prefer the VX. Um, I would lean more towards the VX. A um, little bit comfier, nicer features. Go with the VX. All right. Okay, yeah, here we go. We're getting into the politics. All right, Jason writes, I traded my 2016 VX Cruiser HO for a 21 GP 1800R in August. Pre-order promo two in Canada, 13% sales tax credit on trade-in. To walk away from deal, I lose 2000 uh, $1,000 plus a $500 deposit. Then hang on tight, bro. You got to do what you think is right. I'm not your mom. I can't I can't sway you on that one. You got to do what you think is right. Hopefully it comes through. All right. Uh, uh, Bill says, not getting into it with you here, but I absolutely disagree on you with the tariff issue. Well, what's funny is you don't have to disagree with me because it's not my opinion. <laughs> it's literally the Indochina trade agreement negotiations. Go ahead and look that one up. I don't care what news outlet you find. All right. It's called the Indochina trade agreement negotiations. Google that one. It's not my opinion. <laughs> it's not coming out of here. It's coming out of my mouth. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Politics, politics, politics. Um, pretty sad, isn't it? You can make more sitting at home than you can going to work for starvation wages. It's not starvation wages. Our poor are the richest people. Our rank is some of the richest, most affluent people in the world. They have cars, they have cell phones, they have TVs. More people under the poverty line suffer from obesity in America than any other place in the world. Something's not right. All right. Uh, do, do, do. I see it in my business and many others. It's unbelievable. This is a big problem as we speak. Um, wow, Scott. I don't know how I feel about that. 
Scott Williams writes, hard to go back to driving Uber on the weekends when I get paid $1,800 a month to stay at home as a stay-at-home dad. I did buy my FX Cruiser cash on government money. That's my money, Scott. That's my taxes. And everyone else is here. It's not government money. I kind of have a moral problem with that one. All right. Uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, um, well, okay. Inter yeah, Bill, you you are making a good point. He's asking about inflation, and you're right. Uh, funny thing about it is that in the last uh, 18 months, no, 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 yes, in the last year, we've printed the United States government has printed 58 billion dollars, um, and that's new money. Uh, the thing that's scary about that is. I have no problem with printing new money as long as you take old money out of circulation. When you don't take that money out of circulation, that's when you have inflation. And that's when a Coke, you know, a, a can of Coke goes from 50 cents a can to 75 cents a can to a dollar a can. All right. That is bad fiscal policy. When you can, you know, the idea is, oh, we'll just print money and that's what we'll pay blankety blank with well that works in the short term but when the market catches up they go oh wait a minute there's more money you know there's so much more extra money in circulation that i can charge more money or a higher number of currency for the same product and now you have a, a dollar fifty for a can of coke all right um all right here we go do, do, do. 25% of all U.S. currency in existence was printed in the last year. Yes, that is true. <clears throat> all right. Uh, here we go. Yeah, when someone says you're an idiot, make sure you spell your right. So I'm going to hide that comment. All right. Uh, Pre-ordered a 2021 GTX Limited June of 2020. Finally got it in March. Had no issues until it hit 40 hours. Now the IDF failed. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Please make sure that you get all of, uh, you get in direct contact with your dealership, with your service department. Contact your service department. Make sure that they get the parts that they need and they'll repair it. Um, that hopefully... I've heard some. I, I I've heard great results from people getting repairs of the IDF, and then I've heard nightmare results, and so it's really 50-50. and that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but yeah, hopefully they can get your hopefully they can get your GTX fixed. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry, Michael. All right, under throttle when the pump becomes unloaded due to chop if it, it falls forward. Have you seen the issue with IDF? Um, okay, he's explaining that IDF, under throttle when the pump becomes unloaded due to chop, it falls out forward. That's not IDF. IDF would literally, if, an ID, if you had IDF failure, it would literally sever it literally severs your engine from your drive shaft. That sounds like pump unhooking. That's not IDF. All right. Fix the apps, arguing politics. Oh, uh, boy. Yes, Pete, I would recommend trying to get your deposits back from your dealer. Unless you can get, unless your dealer can totally verify that your unit is coming in the next three to four weeks, I get your money back. 
Okay. All right, here we go. Nick writes, my 2021 Kawasaki Ultra 310 LX jet sound speakers don't have Bluetooth. They only have the auxiliary cable. It's very confusing since the new phones no longer have auxiliary ports. Why would they do this? The, the 21, really? It should have Bluetooth. That's the first I've ever heard of someone not having Bluetooth on their LX. Because that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be um, 2020. Was that was supposed to be resolved then? Rats. All right. Uh, Nick, I don't have an answer for you on that one. It definitely should not be by port. It should be by uh, via Bluetooth. Something's not right. Um, all right. Gino's writes, amazing how Watercraft Journal knows more than media and mainstream. Good job. I am the media. <laughs> And I'm the mainstream media for the personal watercraft industry. <laughs> That's depressing to me. I should not be that person. I'm too dangerous. All right. Um, oh, goodness. Here we go. I'm looking for 2021 RXPX 300. I find one in Fort Worth, Texas, and the asking price out the door is 20800 20, Do you think that's a good price? No. But that's what you're going to pay. That's a good price. Again, demand is higher than supply. Last year, this time last year, no one had good, good toilet paper. Right? I mean, you could get like the really crappy, like, you know, sandpaper stuff. But like Charmin, you weren't getting that anywhere. Right? But what if I pulled up in a Charmin truck that I had been hiding and I stood in the back of that truck and I said, 50 bucks a pack. People would pay 50 bucks for a pack of Charmin instead of, you know, I'm talking like the $22 pack of Charmin. If I say, hey, 50 bucks for a pack, I'd sell, I guarantee you I'd sell every one of those, right? Because not enough, not enough supply to meet the demand. There's not enough RXPX 300s to meet the demand. Not yet anyway. CDU's trying to fulfill all their commitments, but they're seeing delays and they're seeing delays in shipping. They're seeing delays in fulfilling those orders. All right. For a while there, CDU was kind of like, hey, you know, not to whistle past the graveyard, but this is really good news for us. But then they got hit by the other end of it. The truckers were like, I'm not coming to work. So here we go. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Rodney writes, hi, hi from Yamaha two-stroke group. I love the 1998 fully restored 760. Love watching your videos. Thanks, Kevin. Keep up the good videos. Rodney, I wish I did more two-stroke stuff. I wish I did. Yeah, I wanted to do I wanted to do some stuff on like not a lot of stand-up stuff because that's really niche or niche, but um like I want I want to build a GP thirty you know, to be honest, the ski I want to build is an STXR. With a four stroke in it, with a supercharged four stroke, but that's a whole different other creature. Thank you for the super chat, Rodney. I appreciate the I appreciate the support, buddy. Oh, we got more here. Uh, let's get some super chats going. No politics, no bad mojo. I rode my new VXHO this weekend. Got sunburned shoulders and a permanent smile. <laughs> Kevin Shaw, you're the man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, uh, Mark writes. In your opinion. What is the best sea do for long family day trips? I know you love the GTI 170, but what about the GTX 230? Love the black orange color. I like the coloring too. I have problems with the hull. Now, if you're going to ride glass, if you're going to be like on the river and it's just going to be just mellow the whole day, totally, totally. 
great ski. The minute you get into rough with the STX, you start hunting. And then you got to get, you got to modify it. Um, and modifying still is not going to fully fix the behavioral issues of the hull. The reason I prefer the GTI over the GTX is the hull. I know it sounds crazy given it's a Polytech hull, but the hull shape tracks truer. You'll feel a little bit more, but it tracks truer, meaning it doesn't wander, doesn't get pushed around. It tracks truer than the ST3 hull. The ST3 hull is what's underneath the GTX. All right, hope that helped, Mark. Um, oh, guy. Landshark, I'm having to delete a lot of these questions, buddy. Oh. I was thinking to wait for the next year, wondering if the 2022 GP1800 can be better or can be more expensive because of demand. All right. I got some bad news. That seems to be the theme for tonight. I would not expect... 2022 to be much better. Right now, um, consumer confidence is plummeting. And that report came out, was it Forbes? I read so much crap every day. I can't keep it straight. When Dogecoin and Bitcoin took a dump this week. Reports came out about consumer confidence and consumer confidence is in the toilet. And what consumer confidence means is that the people they're talking to are big money spenders. Property, investment, that kind of stuff. And those guys are not feeling the mojo when it comes to 2022. They believe that the policies currently put in place are really going to take their toll in a year's time. And that's scary. So I don't really have good news. The U.S. dollar is inflating like a freaking helium balloon, to Bill's point. He's exactly right. Um, because we've printed so much goofy money. You know, and Richard Nixon took took us off the gold standard in 1970, so or 71. I think it was 71, and um, so our money is not backed by anything, by except for a wink and a promise. I mean, it's our money is it's a piece of paper. You know, there's no there's no value behind it. So um, now that we're printing billions. And there's nothing behind it. I'm scared. I think, I think we'll. I honestly, I think we'll see the first jet ski. I think we'll see the first sea dues over twenty thousand dollars next year. I think the GTX three. If I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I want to be wrong, but everything that I've seen indicates that we might see a GTX three hundred limited at $20,000 MSRP next year. That's the hard truth. All right. Uh, um, let's see here. Oh, boy. So much politics. All right. All right. Woo. All right. Okay. I almost got a 2020 GTX 170 pre owned for 14K. Got a 2012 GTS 130 for under book value instead. Caught it within 15 minutes of the posting. At a boy, Dustin. That's what I'm talking about. Be ready to rock. All right. By the way, that deal for the GTX would have been good. 
that would have been a really good deal. So either would have been fine. Um, yeah. Walter, you've already paid in full for your ski and you haven't gotten it? Yikes. That freaks me out. I sure hope not. Oh, boy. Well, oh, okay. So Stoney asked again about his uh, GP question. Um, <clears throat> would you also recommend adding additional weather stripping to fix the front hood issue? I wouldn't do additional. I would do better. First, I'd verify if it was actually on. Then I would personally tighten, I'd readjust and tighten the hood latch, the hood latch and the hood hinge. They might, they might be loose. They might be misaligned. That happens. Happens with Sea-Doo, happens with Yamaha, happens with Cali, happens to all of them. Things like that happen. Um, it takes a couple minutes, doesn't cost you a dime, just takes a socket wrench, and you could you could tighten that up or readjust it pretty easily. Jason writes, so to follow up, I should pick up a used 2020 EXR. I have $17,000 Canadian down on a 21 GP 1800. Might be a 22 now. You might be waiting deep into 22. Dude, Canada's being honestly, I got my heart goes out to our Canadian friends here. First, I can't believe what's happening in Canada. There's some socio-political things that are going on in Canada that just breaks my heart. Um Second of all, our Canadian friends are not getting any skis. <laughs> they, have, they have gotten such the short end of the stick on this one. I don't know. I, I have no answers for you guys. It is so, it is such a dearth of, of new units. It blows my mind. I mean, Sidhu's hometown can't get new skis. It is so bad right now. And I have no answers. I have no. I have nothing. I got no good news to share. I feel terrible. I wish I could. All right. Uh, put my deposit on May fifth. I am told confirmed ship date May twenty seventh. Two VXs with sound, Atlanta, Georgia. Bruce, that's the best thing. Hold, hold their feet to the fire. That that's fantastic. That's great news. I'm thank you for your comment because that. Um, that's the first I hear from people with a date. Most people can't get a date. <sighs> yeah, Walter paid all the way up front for your ski. Oh, I would never do that. Morally, I would never do that. God, my wife would never let me do that with anything. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, dude. Uh, where's my GPR? You don't have one. It's been sold out from underneath you. You're not getting one. Get your cash back. Get your deposit back. All right. Called my dealer this week for a June delivery. They don't know when exactly the ski will arrive. Exactly as I said. Signed purchase agreement. Said they'll call when it shows. Hopefully it comes through. Hey, Keith. I'll tell you what, buddy. If your dealer is close to you, start talking and seeing when the trucks come in. Talk to a porter. Talk to a sales guy. Talk to a service guy. Any kid who will talk and say, dude, when you, what days do the trucks come in? Well, any day. Okay, well, then you're you're screwed. But who says, oh, yeah, those trucks always show up on Wednesday. Be there Wednesday. I'm not joking. Be there and stand there. And when people are like, sir, can I help you? You're like, that's my ski right there. I want to see it unboxed. 
and then I want my name written on the, you know, on the container. The ski belongs to me. No one takes this ski. I'd do that. Personally, if I had that kind of cash wrapped up in it, I'd be there. I'd be there. All right. Uh, Matthew writes, looks like with all the scarcity of skis, when a person goes to Laughlin or Havasu, we better lock our stuff up tight. Dude, you better lock up your stuff tight and have a suit regardless of what you do. Or your ski is going to be gone and sold for meth. <laughs> have a suit ain't what it used to be. And it wasn't that great when it was what it was. <laughs> all right. Um, all righty. Okay, Bill. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, pricing is going to go up, guys. Oh, next year's prices? Um, minimum $500 per unit. Minimum. Uh, I've heard upwards to $800. And as high as $2,500 for 2022 units. Minimum $500. Upwards of 2500 per unit. Everyone wants predictions for next year. Those are mine. All right. Uh, best regards from Norway. Hey, all right. Um, okay, let's see here. Got my deposit back. Get out of boy. Good. <laughs> what are, what area are we talking about? Okay. Uh, yes, the federal government took away all fra fractional reserve requirements for lending. Yeah, but what's funny? <laughs> you guys want to hear something funny? All right, check this out. All right, this is from the car industry. This is from the automotive industry. It's actually going on right now as we speak. It's happening right now in the automotive aftermarket. Um a major aftermarket performance brand. I'm not going to get into the names because we're actually breaking the story this week, but a major aftermarket, they make cylinder heads and engine blocks and they make, you know, 1100 horsepower street engines for Mopars. Um, the old man wanted to sell, but he was kind of a grouch and they got, uh, they, one of their best customers was a, was a active drag racer who also had a very, very lucrative concrete business and they went to the bank and they had backers and they had all every, all the pieces in place for this concrete guy to buy the company off the old man and the concrete guy he's like yeah i know i'm paying a premium here i'm not getting this for a deal but i know i can build the brand better and i i know i can really make this thing take off so he agreed to the the terms and they were all good to go. And then COVID hit. And COVID backed things up for like six months. And then we start printing money. And we're printing money during the Trump administration, guys. I'm not saying it's Biden. I'm not, I mean, it ain't good. The last, the last year and a half, we've been printing money like idiots. And... Suddenly the bank's like, hey, listen, the deal, the deal's off. We're not doing the deal. Concrete guy's like, dude, what the hell? We're all we're all good to go here. And they're like, yeah, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna finance this. We're not gonna back this. And they went and went and went and went and went and they went back and forth. And finally, at the beginning of this year, like spring of this year, the bank came in. And they said, hey, we'll finance or we'll back this, but. Instead of your liquidity, instead of, you know, what you are in liquid assets, we want you to put up your physical properties. Well, he's got several properties. And he's like, I'm not doing that. And they're like, well, that's the only way that the that we can get, we can get any sort of backing on this. And what's happening right now is something, this is not unique, but this happened to a person that I, that I personally know. And that is that 
the banks, when it comes to big, I'm, I'm talking multi-million dollar purchases, multi-million dollar purchases. The banks don't want your money. They want your property, physical dirt. That's what they want. What does that tell you? Tells you the banks themselves do not have any confidence in the American dollar. They have confidence in physical earth, in physical property. That's scary. Okay, sorry for the aside. All right. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Michael writes, 2018 GP1800, uh, sorry. All right, Michael writes, 2018 GP1800 Viva, uh, Riva Racing Stage 1 Plus. Replace supercharger clutch, but still has no boost or takeoff speed. Any thoughts? Ooh. Where your supercharger's toast. Um, you run a blow-off valve? That blow-off valve might be pinned wide open. It might not be reading a good signal. You might need to adjust your blow-off valve. Because you're scrubbing all your boost. If your supercharger is in good shape, if it's been rebuilt and it's got a good wheel and the you know nothing's been smoked on it, you know it's it's actually together. It might be a blow off valve that's wide open, or you smoke your piston rings, and you're just barfing boost. You you have no boost. Um. And that's scary because then you got blow by like a mother and you're really going to hurt your engine. Okay. Uh, dealer says they can't start a claim unless the ski is here. You know, it's funny. Um, I want you to go over to the video that we published a couple days ago, I think Thursday, that says what's going on with the recall. And I want you to look in the comments section. We got about three people who said, oh, I called ahead and the service guy said, okay, give me all your information. No problem. We'll order the parts. And once the parts show up, we'll, I'll give you a call and your ski can come in. And then the ski came in and the ski was there like for two days, or three days in one case, but the guy didn't mind because it was during the week. And he picked it up like on a Thursday and he rode Friday and Saturday. Guys, any dealer can do this. They're lying to you. You want to know why they're saying they can't do the ticket until your ski's there? Because they're scared that they're going to be stuck with the bill for the parts that you're going to flake on them. People flake. That's understandable. They're spooked. You're going to flake on them. Here's the difference. You're scared. They're going to sit on your ski for months, and you're going to be like, I, I pissed away my ski for a month. There goes my summer. So the street goes both ways. <laughs> All right. Let's see. No skis available in Australia. Um, yeah, it's not great, dude. It's really not great. Uh, Scott Williams writes, Hey, I have a real question. My lake is at 6,225 feet elevation. Is my ski running lean? Well, you put a thousand exclamation marks, but never a question mark. So I'm not going to answer that because that's not a question. You made a statement. Actually, that's a declarative statement. AP English strikes again. You moved your office. No, we, re we uh, redecorated <laughs> um, ordered a 2021 GTX Limited 300 cancelled waiting for 2022 with better colors okay uh, let's see here no skis available in Australia uh, saw someone local list a brand new RXPX zero hours on marketplace for $35,000 Canadian I paid 27k for mine, so you know someone's scalping. Of course they're scalping. Of course they are. Dude, of course they are. It's like, I'll tell you what. I had a buddy in high school. All right. This makes me, if, oh, this makes me so mad. 
I had a buddy in high school who fourth period was the period was the class period right before lunchtime. And his name was Mark Stokes. And Mark, Mark was a teacher's assistant in that class. And he was like a TA for like the driver's ed teacher or some like ridiculous class that didn't matter, who did not need a, t- a teacher's assistant. So Mark split. He had a, he had like a two hour lunch every day. Well, Mark got hip and he goes, hey, we had to get, if you wanted to go off campus to get lunch, like jump in your car and go to Jack in the Box or In-N-Out Burger or something like that, you had to get a, you had to get a pass. And well, he had, he got a pass and he didn't have to renew the pass. He had, it worked for the whole semester. And so Mark would, would get his off-campus lunch permit. He'd walk across the street to a little pizza parlor who sold $5 um, large pepperoni pizzas. Uh, just, a, a, just a large pepperoni pizza for 5 bucks. And Mark would go over there, and he'd take 10 bucks, get two large pizzas. He'd walk back to the – we ate on a little shady hill. All of our friends did. And he stood there. With, and he, he had gone to Costco or Sam's Club and gotten a big pack of paper plates, kept them in his backpack, and no joke, slice of I mean, he's, with his hands, no no plastic glove or anything like that. This is 1994, you know. And he'd reach in the box, pull out a slice, throw it on uh, a plate of pizza, and he'd charge you a dollar a piece of pizza. All right. Well, how many slices are in a pie? There's what typically eight. So yeah, about eight eight slices. So he's making. Eight dollars off of he's making three bucks every time, so he's making his money back and another three bucks. Well, you do this every day for a week, all right? So he's making 30 bucks a week for what for doing nothing. Now, occasionally, he would you know eat his profits. <laughs> you know, you're never, never supposed to smoke your own product, is that what they say? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. But uh, yeah, oh, whoa, whoa, we got a huge super chat. We got a $20 super chat, guys. I, I skipped over this. Um, anyway, my point is, is that he took advantage of the system. People wanted pizza instead of the cafeteria food. He brought over a hot, you know, a, a hot pepperoni pizza and people, and he took advantage of it. That guy is taking advantage of it. I don't blame him. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, I mean, it sucks, but I don't blame him. All right, all right. Uh, so, oh, here's Bill. Just getting riding in southeastern Massachusetts as I didn't want to skin a seal for a wetsuit to fit for my What <laughs> 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 Wouldn't it be a sea lion? <laughs> Seals are kind of small. Sorry. <laughs> That's funny, though. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Uh Oh, girls, girls, stop fighting. This politics arguing crap, stop it. Stop it. Stop fighting, girls. You're both pretty. <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right. Um, all right. Michael says, drive shaft stops spinning. I have to put it in IDF for it to give me an error code. Then it's back into forward gear. Oh, then that means you got... you. I bet you you're getting low oil pressure and it's surging. Definitely take it in. And it's got the low, low oil pressure, meaning that the oil journals are not aligned. They're going to be misaligned. And that way that you're not getting enough oil into it. That might be your problem. Okay. Ugh. Adam writes, Placed an order for a RX TX 300 for 29000 Australian with trailer from a dealer in Australia was 24000 before COVID. Yeah, it's only going to get worse, dude. It's only going to get worse. I'm sorry. All dealerships in Alabama require skis to be in-house to initiate recall order of parts. Sucks. Wrong. Take it elsewhere. Tell them I'm taking it elsewhere. Honestly, you're in Alabama. Take it to Dustin Farthing's, what is it, Speed Zone? Dustin Farthing's shop. Dustin Farthing is a licensed Yamaha dealer. He'll he'll order the parts. You just go, dude, I want to ride my ski until the parts come in. 
I'll give you my credit card number as collateral so you know I'm not flaking. Farthing would do it. Farthing will take your business. Call Farthing. Tell your dealer, screw you, I'm going to Farthing. Play hardball. Ride your ski. I'm telling you, ride your ski till it breaks. I don't care. Don't let them take your skis, guys. Catch cans are not cheap. $130 plus. Any options? Um, I'm working on mine, but mine's going to be $125. $120. But the difference is that mine's cheaper than everyone else's, and mine works better. Because mine's not a deadhead circuit. Mine's a complete circuit. I'll go into more detail about that later, but I have my prototype literally out on my RXPX right now. If I could take the camera with me, I'd walk out into the dark and show you. All right. Hey, Kevin, GP1300R or Ultra 150? Neither. STXR. STR, STXR was the winningest runabout for a decade. In all classes, STXR. More championships were claimed on the STXR than any other runabout in a decade. It's crazy. Look at the numbers. Dude, Farthing, McCluggage, Craig Warner, um, Legopolis was on a, was on a CD. Um, who else was on STXRs? Uh, oh, Matsuris was on an STXR for a short time. Um, he was predominantly stand-up, but he did ride an STXR. Uh, Rias. Oh, geez, how did I forget Nicholas Rias? Um, uh, dude, Fischetti, Chris Fischetti was on an STXR. Dude, the biggest names were on STXRs. I love the STXR. Love it. So I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a super fanboy of the STXR. All right. Um, we're at one thirty or an hour thirty. Okay. Uh drawing cars 360. I have had a 2021 GP 1800 RSVHO on pre-order for two months now. Is there any chance that I'll get out at all this year? Oh yeah. Uh well, as long as you're now the problem is that dealers are actually canceling orders because they know that their allotment has been fulfilled or their allotment has been reduced. Um, I don't know. If, you're, if, you, if your dealer has contacted you, I don't know. But you haven't been waiting very long. Two months. I'm looking at I'm, look, I'm looking at our Canadian guys here, guy, dude. I'm honestly looking at our Canadian guys here who, who've been waiting for six or seven months. Six months? Forget it. Six weeks, I'd have my money back. But... Right now, two weeks isn't so bad. Um, yeah, again, KG, uh, depends on how long you've been waiting. If it's been four or five months, get your money back. All right. Brian writes, picked up my uh, FX SVHO last week, ordered them in February, got super lucky. Not so well, you got lucky that it didn't get sold out from underneath you. But uh, the FXs, my understanding, survived the cut. They did not get, um, they did not fall under the, the production number knife. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, don't want to think, <laughs> think out the depreciation curve on a ski that someone paid 25K for. Dude, yeah. Uh, I don't want to think about... Yeah, I don't want to think about the depreciation curve. Yeah, Zach, that's... Uh, oof. All right, Brent writes, when is Yamaha going to announce the 2022? Do you think anything will be different on the GPs? No, colors. If, if that, they might just keep the colors as is. Well, the, the guys... Understand that skis typically go unchanged for minimum four years, unless there's a major problem. Unless there's a major problem, skis go unchanged for three to four years minimum. Um, halfway through, they they often I won't say typically, but they'll often 
do like a little refresh. Um, now, mind you, obviously colors, they'll change colors every year, usually. Um, 2022, I almost guarantee the VXs and GPs carry over exactly as, as is. They're just going to bleed. They're just going to change the VIN number on the back. I can't imagine them even changing colors. I really can't because they're trying so quickly to catch up. They're so desperate to catch up that it, it's just, it, it, it wouldn't make sense for them to be like, okay, let's do some more, some different colors. I almost think the colors will stay the same. Uh, oh, burger rights. Okay. My local Yamaha dealer told me that Yamaha shuts down production in July to set up for the next year's wave runners. He stated this year that Yamaha is not doing that because of the shortages. Well, I'll tell you what, I toured the facility three years ago. Was it that long ago? No, it was 2019. Had to have been. Anyway, but it was during the middle of summer. And they don't shut down production. That, that costs them money. What they do do is they align the production sequence so that units that are, that are predominantly unchanged for the next year don't break stride. They don't break production. All right, that, that line is continually moving while they're tooling up for the new stuff. New colors, new paint, whatever it might be. New shape, again, whatever it might be. Um, but at no, point is, at no point is the factory blacked out. Um, they're, they're, well, normally. <laughs> I should say that. Um, but in regards to production... They're always continuing production. All right. Uh, Anthony writes, truck driver dropped off some crates at work the other day. He came from Valcourt, said there was a couple thousand crates sitting in a lot up there. What's in them, I can't say. But, Anthony, you're confirming my point, right, about there not being enough truck drivers. So thank you. Um, that's <sighs> Tony. <laughs> Let's ask the real question everyone is thinking. What kind of candle are you burning in the background? Um, let's see what it's called. It's a Febreze home collection seagrass breeze. <laughs> Smells like bathroom cleaner to me. <laughs> <laughs> seagrass breeze whatever that means <laughs> um all right yeah jose i'm sorry buddy jose writes u.s puerto rico we don't have any new yamaha skis and any delivery spe uh, speculation nor do i Dude, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, all right. Kayla writes, ordered a GP1800HO in December. Been emailing dealer for months to get a ship date. Dealer would not tell me when it was coming. Finally got an email this week. ETA now June 24th, so a month from now. Kayla, are you comfortable with that? If you're comfortable with that, then wait. But you've been comfortable for... <sighs> when did you order it? December? So you've been waiting five months? Guys, I can't believe you waited this long. Ugh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Matthew, after all this talk, I don't feel bad about paying $18,000 and sitting at my dealer making my deal until 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve, <gasps> although my wife wasn't happy. <laughs> That's great, 
dude. You're dedicated. That's fantastic, Matt. I love that one. That's a great comment. <laughs> uh, oh, shoot. All right. Oh, my gosh. Cliff, yeah, low compression. It it could be. Don't don't let that be your first thing. Um I I, I still want to say your supercharger is acting up. I don't want to say your pistons are bad. But I'll tell you what, go to Harbor Freight. Go to Harbor Freight, pull the spark plugs out of your ski, and get a compression tech checker. And do a compression check. And then do a leak down test. That's what sixty dollars in tools, just so you know what's going on with your ski. And if you got good compression, and you're not blowing, if you're not blowing air pressure through, you know, past your pistons really bad, then you know it's your supercharger or your blow off valve. Check it first. Don't go. Oh my gosh, I got bad pistons. Yeah, dude, that's that's the most expensive. Oh. Recommendations for a reliable depth finder for my uh 21 FX SVHO. Oh Lawrence has a really good one. We did an installation of a Lawrence system. But we did that like four years ago or five years ago. Still works, still works great. Yeah, I look at Lawrence in hull. Don't hang off the transom in hull. All you do is you just get some, you get some sil, you know the the adhesive silicone, <laughs> jam it in there, run your wire up. You're good. All right. Uh, oh my gosh. All right, all right. And don't get high on your own supply. <laughs> that's the turn of phrase. Okay, don't get high on your own supply. All right, uh, that's funny. Uh, making me feel pretty great. Got my RXPX for fifteen five before taxes. They did tell me it was the last one before the delays. Hey, Cade, then you made out like a bandit, dude. That's rad. Good for you. Are you a Yamaha guy or a Sea-Doo guy, Kevin? Um, everything's got its warts. Um, you know what, Rodney? I'll tell you this. If Kawasaki tomorrow said the Ultra 310 is 100% unchanged, except it comes in burnt orange, metallic burnt orange like it did like five years ago, and it had a brake and reverse system like ride. I'd be wearing team green every Sunday. I would be I would be team green. If if the Ultra 310X came in burnt orange and had IBR, IBR or ride. Even for all the warts that that 14-year-old ski has. I would be I would be an ultra guy if it had Yamaha's brake and reverse system. Easy, easy, dude, easy. Sorry, it's not the answer. Um, look at that, Seth. Oh, Seth, this sucks. All right. Yeah, I literally waited like five months for my first 2020 SVHO Limited, but the second one got right away as they shipped since we knew the dealer. Oh, it didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. You got it. All right. All right. Jose Fernando writes Hi, Kevin. I'm from Cancun. Quick question. Did you see JP Racing's new filter? If I put it on, what happens to the current pipe? Do I have to remove it or just leave it uh, un 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 unattached? Um, you can leave it there. You can leave the water box and, and I mean, what's the ski? The ski is, um, did you tell me what ski it's on? 
it doesn't matter. You can leave the air box and yeah, you can leave the air box and put the filter on and all that kind of stuff. Um, the problem is, is that my understanding is that his, his new air filter requires you to run a deadhead style, uh, um, catch cam, whether it's his or it's Riva's or whomever's. And that's fine. It's not going to hurt your ski. It's just not ideal. Um, I like, I, I like to optimize the performance as much as humanly possible while retaining a lot of the factory functions. I don't like undoing factory functions. Um, when you undo factory functions, you're now claiming I'm smarter than the engineer who built this built designed and built this ski. And I'm not, I, I'm not that smart. Um, so yeah, you can run that cold air air or that cold air air filter. Um, I don't think it is. He says it's he says it's marinized. He says it's water wicking. Um, I know Riva's air filter is water wicking. It's a proprietary for them, like it's specially made for them. It's not just a cane in filter. Um. The problem is I don't like the engine breathing from right there. I don't. Because that is the hottest part of the engine compartment. Right? Literally in between the engine, the intercooler, and the water box with all the exhaust zigzagging around it. That's the hot... You literally take a heat gun, you know, one of those little $18 heat guns from Harbor Freight, and point it. That's the hottest part of the engine compartment. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't agree with it. All right. Joshua James is speaking my language. Joshua, add a boy. Joshua writes, getting tired of waiting for my GTR that I have. Um, oh, wait, wait. Okay, Josh writes, getting tired of waiting for my GTR. I have a GTI. Kind of tempted to pick up a crash industry stand-up that's for sale local as a second ski instead. Do that. Oh, <laughs> do that. Do that. Dude, you got a GTI. Go f have fun with the GTI. Put the wife on the GTI. Go ride your crash. Have a blast. Have fun. Do that. All right, Aiden writes, finally got my second VX and trailer after seven months. Okay, wow. Seven months. Um, oh, my goodness. What is happening here? Uh, okay, KG writes, I have a 2012 Kawasaki STX 15F. Engine cranks with no plugs in it. Doesn't crank with spark plugs in it. I've hit a brick wall. New battery, new spark plugs, no start. I'm stuck. Um, what's your starter situation? The Bendix on your starter might not be you you might have a worn out bendix and so the bendix is coming out of the starter trying to turn the flywheel and because it's com it's got compression it can't crank the engine kg i i'd look at starters they're cheap i'd look at a starter because what happens you put the plugs in that means you've got compression and those pistons are not want, or that that engine can't crank with compression. It means your starter's toast. With no compression, it just turns the crank. It's no, it's easy. It's like turning it with a socket wrench. But when it's got compression, it's going. <laughs> it's anemic. Get rid of it. Get get a starter. Okay, that's my thinking. Come back to me. Email me at info, info at watercraftjournal.com when you change the starter and see if that fixes it. I want to know if it fixes. KG, if you're listening, please do that. All right. 
Uh, Land Shark, too many complainers here. Land Shark, you're literally, I had to delete half your comments, dude. All right. Uh, pajama time. People are selling used 2020 GTI 70s for 23,000 Canadian with a trailer. Last year they were 16, brand new. Yeah, dude. Demand, supply, inflation. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Anthony, if you want to be a scalper, I, I, I don't mean that negatively, but if you want to sell your two FXs, you can, you'll probably make good money, just as long as you haven't drilled holes through the transoms and put through a through-hole exhaust. You guys, dude, I would never buy a ski with through-hole exhaust. I would never buy a ski with through-hole exhaust. Maybe if it was installed by like Dean's team or Riva or Broward, but if it's just some dude, I don't trust anyone to wrench on my stuff. Not to mention drilling a hole through the back of my ski. I wouldn't do it. All right. Who makes the best tune for elevation for FX SVHO? At 6,200 feet. Reva, Map Tuner X. Get it through Jerry Gaddis. Get 10% off using gr the coupon code Green Hulk. Reva, because you can always swap it, swap it back. It's not permanent. You can swap it back to stock. You can upgrade it. You can do whatever you want. Reva, Map Tuner X. Go through Jerry Gaddis. All right. Bought a brand new 2019 GTR 230 in March 2020. Paid twelve thousand seven hundred with a trailer and thought I got taken. What a difference, dude! Sean, you're whistling Dixie now. All right. Justin writes, feeling pretty good about getting my 2021 Ultra three ten R for retail back in April of twenty one. Right now. Called eight dealers before I found one with a supercharged ski in stock. Yeah, well, dude, Cowie, Cowie sold out. Cowie sold everything. Like, they're done. Like, yay. No more skis till next production run. Like, it's over. They're done. They're not making it anymore. It's crazy. Baylor writes, I just bought a 2021 Yamaha VX Cruiser HO and the audio won't work. Is this a recurring theme? No. First I've ever heard. Will it not sync to your phone? Will it not turn on? Are you not seeing it light up? Are you not getting the tone? Won't work doesn't tell me anything. Does it have power? Does it power on? There's a lot. It won't even get power. Okay, then take it to the dealer. Yeah, you got to take you got to take it to the dealer. Easy. Um. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. Richard, Richard Variano, we, we ordered a 21 VX Cruiser HO in early April, and they said we got waitlisted. Won't get one until 22. Get your money back. Get your money back. You can, you'll can you find one. If you look, you'll find a new one. You'll pay. Ooh, you'll pay. But you'll find one. All right. We got a couple more minutes, and I'm almost done. Ron, <laughs> Rodney. Kawasaki, seriously? Dude, I raced ultras. I raced ultras and I know that ski like the back of my hand. I know, I know all of its warts. Um, yeah, Richard, I know they're saying, I know what they're saying. You asked my opinion. I gave it. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you, dude. Um, I get your money back, and I would—I'd be Johnny on the spot. 
Hey, Super Chat, BNN. Hey, guys, um, just so you know, Super Chats allow me to do this every night. And, uh, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions, but uh, I, I, I was reticent to mention this. Um, we don't charge for any of our content. We don't charge for any of the magazines. We don't have any subscription fees. Our newsletters are free. Uh, every article we publish is free access. There's no downloads. There's no passwords. There's no app to do. You know, there's nothing. It's just a website. And um, the same thing with video. And we make a little bit of money from Google ads on video. And we make a little. And we make money with our uh, sponsorship. But again, YouTube's free. There's no premiere. We're not doing YouTube premiere access. I'm not doing a. I'm not doing a paywall. I'm not doing any of that kind of stuff. So I do ask. I mean, it's not just me. I got. I got a staff of guys. So I. Um, I do appreciate people who want to send us, you know, uh, want to send us a super chat and want to buy a shirt or buy a long hauler kit. Um, these things support us. This allows us to keep this going. Um, I do not know how long I can continue doing an hour and a half, two hours every Sunday night. Um, probably not very much longer, <laughs> but uh, it'll have to be more of a stringent, like 45 minute or an hour, and then I'm cut off. Um, but again, I want to say thank you to, uh, to all of our Super Chat supporters who come in and make this possible. Uh, that is what keeps us going. So uh, thank you again to all of you who've donated. And, oh, we just got a brand new one. Speak of the devil. Steven, thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, okay, so back to that, Rodney. Yeah, honestly, I the Ultra 310 has the most storage of any watercraft, has the largest fuel capacity, has the largest horsepower output, has the best rough water handling hull, has a very tried and true and kind of worn out powertrain. Um, it's got the most veins of a stock factory pump. I think it's got a 12 vein pump. I mean, no, no, no. Yamaha's eight vein. Guy, did they up it? Guy, uh, I have to look at the staters. Crap. But for the longest time, for the longest time, Kawasaki had the best stator in, in their pump setup. Um, I, I, they're just so behind the times when it comes to brakes and reverse. I hate that. I hate that reverse lever so much. I want to take a sawzall and cut it off. But, um, yeah, if they had a ride, if they had ride on a seat on a Cowie, oh my gosh, forget it. Forget it. I'd sell some personal stuff and get a Cowie like I would. Just so I could throw freaking parts at it. Oh my gosh, look at the super chats coming in. Hey, Anthony, thank you, sir. I'll be nice and send you some extra money this week. But you missed my last super chat about Salt Away. What was your question, Anthony, about Salt Away? We did a whole video on Salt Away. Uh, LOL, forgot to ask. My skis are at Speed Zone. Can I name drop? Help! Wow. Speed zones, Dustin Farley. Yeah. Yeah, by all means, hit him up and say, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what your ski, Stephen, what, what's going on with your skis? How long will the one gallon of salt away that I just bought last? Depends on how much you use. If you run straight salt away and you're just guzzling it, it ain't gonna last long. Recall, okay. Stevens got his he's got his skis at the re your skis are at speed zone already. They're gonna hang on to until the parts show up. Yeah. 
GP and a VX cruiser. Okay. Yeah, he's waiting for parts. Shoot. Yeah, uh, Anthony. Uh, it depends on how it depends on how often you use it, and it depends on how greedy you are with it. <laughs> um, but uh, if you're a miser, it'll last you a, a season. Uh, it just depends on how much riding you do and how thick you cut it. Um, Steven, if your skis are already at speed zone, then you're kind of stuck. Um, yeah, you're kind of stuck. You can't get your skis back until they do the recall, and that's it's kind of out of your hands now. Um, oh, Bill, let's try to keep the chats going. No, it's two hours. I got two and a half minutes before I'm out of here. <laughs> you're killing me. Um, uh, I can, I'll demo your catch can. You'll you'll buy my catch can, B. Uh, it's only for C. It's only for 300 horsepower CDs anyway. Uh, well, I mean, for two, it's all, it's only for supercharged CDs. Um, but yeah, I, I won't be out for a while. I'm still doing testing. All right. Uh, Rodney writes, thanks again, buddy. Um, from the, from the, from the group, love to see some two stroke videos from you. Yeah. I just have to get my hands on some two stroke stuff. It's been forever. Um, thanks for your help. My pleasure. Hey, I have a 21 RXPX2. Send me a demo unit. I have one demo unit that I'm working on. I've gone through a bunch of different prototypes, and I finally found a canister that I'm happy with. Um, uh, hey, have you heard from Cooper Anchors? What do you think of them? I've never heard of them, nor have they sent me anything. Um, but I am supposed to be getting one of the Alpha Jet uh, anchors. Because uh, PwC, uh, not Venmo, but we do, uh, um, Scott, we do not have Venmo, but we do have PayPal. If you want to PayPal us, you PayPal me at kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com. Um, yeah, Mark, going back to your anchor question. Uh, I, I am going to be testing one of the PwC Muscle Alpha Jet uh anchors i just haven't gotten it yet but um uh yeah that one's coming where i'll do a video and article on that one. Oh, speaking of new videos oh my gosh i totally left this out okay i got 40 seconds um because i'm out of here two hours i'm done wiped out um we have a new our intro people have complained that our intro is too long and I already knew it was a little long, so that's okay. Um, but uh, we're we're trying to do a little shorter, briefer one. Um, we still want to have the same kind of show feel, but our long intro video is going to be shortened. It's going to be re-edited for 2021. And then the next video to come out with that new intro will be our, pla our high-gloss plastic restoration tutorial. For Sea-Doo, um, I literally destroy on camera one of those high gloss mirror covers with gasoline. Like I rub 93 octane onto it and totally bleach it out. And anyone who's ever spilled gas on those things know it's a goner. And I show you in front of your face how easy it is to fix it. I have thought about doing like a Facebook Live, actually doing recreating the whole thing over again. But I'd rather have people watch the YouTube video. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Phil Farthing ain't going to give a rat's ass if you, if you name drop me. He ain't going to care. But, um, go ahead, whatever, to say, oh, yeah, they spoke really highly of you guys and that, you know, you could get my skis out the door. I don't know. I'll probably get a nasty phone call. Um, but, uh. Just tell Dustin he can go drive his Lamborghinis. Whatever. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks again. This was fun. Uh, I'm sorry for all the politics. Um, we're in a we're in a scary situation. Uh, this did not exist last year, um, but 
we're in all new territory and Yamaha is not trying to pull a fast one on anyone. Yamaha is not trying to deceive anyone. Yamaha wants to sell the product and have happy customers. That's all they want. Dealers are doing their damnedest to try to help people out. But heaven knows that a lot of dealers can't find their butt in the dark with both hands. I, I'm not trying to be mean, but I literally have been shown videos of some of the largest retailers for c -Dews, And the guys on camera blatantly lying. I mean, blatant, either he's so woefully ignorant of his own product, but he says that he knows everything about these skis, but he's literally lying on camera. If he if he's not ignorant, he's he's literally blatantly bald face lying, and that blows my mind. Like I I literally sent the video to Cedu, and I was like, guys, this is who's representing your product, and I didn't get a response back. <laughs> I felt like a narc, but I'm like, dude, this is damaging to your brand. And that's how I, a lot of times, I want to say 50% of the dealers are not doing enough. They're just not. And that's why you can have, you know, Ryan Harwick and Dustin Farthing and Chris McCluggage and, you know, racers. Jet ski racers come in and start dealers and their dealers are kicking butt. And it's because they know the product and they know how to talk about the product. It, it baffles me. It baffles me. It blows my mind. So we're in a really tough situation, guys. I'm sorry for all the bad news. I wish I could give you workarounds. I wish I could tell you there was a secret backdoor entrance and a secret handshake and a you know, some sort of club that will get you in and get your ski there early. Um, the dealers don't know because the manufacturer doesn't know. And the manufacturer doesn't know because the suppliers, the parts suppliers, they're not really sure either. It's the fog of war. It's really, really ugly out there. And unfortunately, a lot of people are sitting there with a deposit or in some cases having paid full price. And they don't have a they don't have a ski. So, guys, I apologize. My heart breaks for you. It sucks. It's incredibly frustrating. Um, but <laughs> was that the three stooges secret handshake? Exactly. <laughs> um yeah, guys, I'm sorry. I wish I had more to tell you. I don't. Um so we got videos coming. We got articles coming. We got some really fun stuff coming out. Uh, please subscribe to the newsletters. Please. I'm wearing a Riva shirt right now, but please buy a watercraft shirt or a hoodie. Um, and if you drive, if you ride a Cowie or a Yamaha or a 2012 or older sea do add 13 and a half gallons to your ride with our uh, self-feeding auxiliary fuel system kit. You can ask me all sorts of questions about it. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Guys, thanks again. We'll see you around.